Well, hey guys, welcome to another Ultimate Edge webinar series. This time we're back with one of our favorite people, Glenn Smart. Glenn, I think you're becoming a frequent guest on our channel here. We appreciate that. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining us again. Glenn, as you know from previous webinars or maybe YouTube videos, wherever you watched him, is the Vice President of the Reverse Mortgage Division for Bay Equity Home Loans. And he knows more about reverse mortgages than kind of anybody I know. So that's why we invite him back. And we understand, Glenn, I was talking to you the other day and there's been some changes in the purchase reverse mortgage in particular, and we're really excited to understand just what's going on and what's happened there. And there have been changes in, in many areas. I'm pretty excited and, and I'm happy to share with your group. So thank you for letting me do so. Um, before I jump into the purchase, let me first tell you that there's been a change to the maximum claim amount. And oh, that's, a, that's a term that might be a little different. Um, in reverse mortgages for the HUD insured program, uh, when we determine how much money people get, we use the age of a younger person and we use the value of the home up to HUD's limit. HUD has a limit and it changes every year and it went up. It is now 1.149,825,000. So it's 1.14 million, uh, almost 1.15 million. Dollars. What's the increase over last year on that value? Right. Last year is 1,089,350. So okay. there's okay. A, about a hundred and, and what, a hundred thousand kind of dollars noticeable, so, right yeah. so we're in that range absolutely so as the price of housing has gone up it's actually made uh, more money available to folks that fall into that range so that's always exciting news that'll be effective for the entire year 2024 we'll look for a change again uh, january 1st 2025 but i thought i'd share right. that good news to start um, All right, more yeah. money for our reverse mortgage people guys keep that in you mind that's it. good you got it. The other big changes you mentioned, uh, HUD has rolled out a new set of guidelines. So they've taken all of the reverse mortgage guidelines that were kind of piecemeal over the years, and they put them together in one document. It's only 1,800 pages. I, I wish I were kidding about that. Uh, but in those 1,800 pages, and yes, I've read them, uh, there are a lot of I was going to ask that exact question. Glenn. Yeah, I promise. And you know what? All of my team members have too. They love me for it. Um, so one of the changes is that HUD has, has now allowed on purchase transactions, they've now allowed for seller concessions. And what's a seller concession? That's for the seller to pay closing costs or for the lender to pay, pay closing costs or for the realtor to pay closing costs. That's been allowed on every other type of loan transaction. Yes. But when the reverse purchase program was first created in 2008, uh, it was specifically not allowed. And that was written into law by Congress. So it's taken a while, it's taken a lot of work to bring reverse mortgages on par with all other types of loans. So now up to 6% of the sales price, you've got a half million dollar property, you've got $30,000 up, up to that. That's huge. Exciting That's things huge. happen there. One yeah. of the things we, we notice about reverse mortgage, there are certain closing costs, including a HUD insuring fee. And some folks look at that and say, no, that, that can be a little pricing. Well, now you can have the seller pay for that. And more importantly, those that are using the reverse mortgage to buy a brand new home from a builder, from a home builder. Well, home builders like to offer credits in lieu of dropping their price. Right. And those credits have not been allowed. So it's been very difficult to use the reverse mortgage purchase to buy a new home from a builder. And now that's not the case. So that that's, opens that's awesome. up. That is huge. And that just opens huge. up the program for so many more. Already a million people have taken a reverse mortgage, but this is going to make it available to many, many more. So we're really, really excited about that one and the potential for people that are that are buying brand new homes as well. That is exciting. news. I, it that's is. great. It is. Now, even more. So in those 1800 pages, there was also a, a change in how HUD classifies properties as they're being built. You know, uh, there's a distinction now between a house that's been under construction, but is substantially done and a house that's barely started construction. In the right. past, they were kind of lumped together and the documentation and the rules were just candidly onerous. It, it, it was off putting and made the reverse harder to use. Now, how to said, okay, if the property is at a certain stage, if it has a certificate of occupancy given by the, the local authority or the equivalent, you know, it's passed the inspections. If it's at that stage, it falls into a category where it's essentially done. And we don't need nearly the same level of documentation that we would have done before. So those folks that are that are building their right. own house have seen significant increases as, as well. Should I'm I keep going? Run out to every builder I know after we're done here. And you got to tell them. them plan. You got to tell them. You ready for a little bit more good news? Uh, yeah, bring it on. All right. 
So let's talk about this one. Um, when we determine how much money people get, as I mentioned, we use the age of the youngest borrower. We use the value of the home up to HUD's limit, and we use something called the expected rate. Now, the expected rate, that's a term that's unique to reverse mortgage. OK, right. and it is simply a government guess. It's a it's a look into the future, what they think might be happening to interest rates. And we use that number to determine with those other factors how much money people can get. Now, the expected rates change every single week. All right. So the amount of money people can get on a reverse mortgage is always in flux. So be very careful if somebody says, oh, well, you can get a 50 percent loan to value or this percent. That number is always moving. And that's why we're always careful to not quote that because it won't be any good past the following Tuesday. It changes every single Tuesday. Right. Now, in the past, when the consumer applied for the loan, that expected rate was able to be locked in. So we would lock in that expected rate. What that did is it kept the loan from getting worse while we were processing it. We didn't want to start the loan and then rates are getting worse, expected rates are going up. And now at the end, instead of getting the amount of money we told somebody, they're getting less. Right. That that looked like bait and switch. So the government allowed us to lock in that expected rate. And what they allowed us to do before is say, OK, if the expected rate gets better at the time we close, we can automatically give them that improvement. So oh, okay. it was it was kind of a cap. Right. So if it got better, it got better. Here's what they did, though. They now said, look, forget that. Forget it's at this point when you started. It's at this point when we finish. It's if it goes down along the way, even if it goes back up, whatever oh. the lowest point is, is is now the new expected rate. <laughs> and what that means is that people that apply for the loan are going to to now know this is kind of the worst case as long as the house appraises, um, but it can get better. Right. And they don't have to track it along the way or try to time it. It's whatever it happens to be along the way. They're automatically going to get that, even if rates start back up. And that's a All huge right, win. I yeah. know this question is coming, so I might as well just ask it right now. So in you this decreasing interest rate environment that we're in, do you see in the reverse mortgage can they may go, well, I'm just going to delay this closing another 30 days because I think rates might come down. Yeah, that, that's a possibility. Now, well, but when we talk about the expected rate and being able to lock it in and getting the best case along the way, yeah. there's no reason to do that. OK, there's no reason to do that. Now, the other side of that is some people say, OK, because the older you are, the more money you get. Maybe yes. I'll wait. Maybe I'll wait to take the reverse mortgage down the road. OK, remember the other factors, though. It's it's age. It is the value of the property and it's the expected rates. So while you're waiting and aging, you're hoping that your property value doesn't come down. OK, because if that comes down, you could be losing ground here. You also are guessing interest rates. Yes, I like I like to say that's like guessing the stock market. Yes. You might be right once in a while, but as you know, evidence by yesterday with the, with yeah, the rate market. Yesterday markets. was an ugly day, wasn't it? Yes, but, you it know, if, if we look at interest rates on, on mortgages as a whole in reverse mortgages in particular over the last two years, they're double what they were just a couple of years ago. So yeah. rates tend to jump up and trickle down. All right. So you can certainly try to time it. You might do very, very well. You might also just have it smack you in the head, candidly, uh, because who knows? I would suggest, though, that that you don't want to delay starting because you'll know what the worst case expected rate is going to be because it can only go down between close between then and close. Yeah. It's Similar to a forward mortgage, I think a bird in hand is typically better to grab when it's there, guys. If you can live with that rate, you can live with that payment, yeah. grab it while it's there because it's an erratic rate market right now. You got it. And then when we look at reverse mortgages too, just because we take the reverse mortgage doesn't mean that you have to stick with that mortgage forever. If property values go up or rates come down, it may behoove you to have um, – a refinance done. We can certainly replace that reverse mortgage with a new reverse mortgage and have more cash coming your way. So it's not necessarily one where it's set for life. It, it can be changed if it's in the best interest of the consumer. And if you do that refinance from a reverse mortgage to a reverse mortgage, Glenn, is there any advantage on the new mortgage, like reduced MIP with the FHA streamline or anything like that? So the government has an insuring fee. That's what you're referring to, the mortgage insurance premium. And it's not quite like it is for a traditional FHA loan where there's just 
here's what you paid last time, here's what the new one is, you pay the difference. Right. There's a there's a formula for a reverse mortgage. In most cases, unless the value of the property just has skyrocketed, the mortgage insurance is going to be close to zero or zero. So often you can replace that loan without having to pay the government insuring fee all over again. Okay. That's huge. Now, yeah, it is. If the loan's older or the values jumped up, that number can change and it's it's individualized. But for most folks who are doing it, they're going to see no new mortgage insurance. Okay. Well, that's good to, that's good to it's know. It's a huge win. It's a huge win. Yeah. So the government makes it an easier process altogether. And there's a set of guidelines to say, okay, is it in the best interest of the consumer? You have to get a certain amount of money over and above whatever it costs to do that. Um, and sense. there's a cottage, yeah, cottage industries where people will try to get you to refinance all the time, but ethically it's got to fit your needs and, and we'll show you what those formulas are. Fair enough. Yeah. All so right. What of, else in that 1800 page document do you want to pull out here? Oh well, my goodness. There's so many things. And, you know, from our standpoint, there are a couple of things that are just a little tighter, uh, but not excessively so. What we okay. like most about it is HUD clarified some areas that were just not very clear before. So the guidance is is pretty straightforward. Um, there shouldn't be any disparity now between different investors on how they're going to interpret things. So we're pretty darn excited about it. Um, that 6% limit though is, is one that's brand spanking new to, to the industry and we're excited about. Because one of the other things that came up before is when buyers and sellers are you know, negotiating when, when there's right. an inspection done. You know, right. if there are repairs that need to be done, often in lieu of doing the repairs, there'd be a credit. We couldn't allow the credit and now we can. So yeah, just the overall flexibility is just absolutely huge. So uh, it's a great opportunity to, to use the reverse mortgage to buy a house. They also clarified those who have a reverse mortgage now who are going to be selling that property and buying another one using a reverse mortgage. That process is now easier. There was kind of an oh. overlay that HUD had before and they clarified that to make that an easier process for consumers too. It's oh, yeah, a lot wow. of great changes that came out. Good. Uh, good well, stuff. Ben, you and I were talking just about two days ago about a client who was searching for a reverse mortgage and asking me some questions. And they asked some other questions after our conversations. Uh, we've talked about this on previous webinars with you, but you know what? It's a good opportunity if somebody's just seeing this for the first time to ask those same questions. So here's some questions I got asked. Number one is, can you do a reverse mortgage on a non-owner occupied property? And the answer is absolutely not, just to be clear. So <laughs> With an absolutely the in there. <laughs> yeah, the reverse mortgage must be on the primary residence of the consumer. Now, having said that, we help an awful lot of people who take the reverse mortgage on their primary residence, take the cash from that and either then become cash buyers on the investment property or put down a much larger amount and then get better interest rates and in terms altogether. So they'll have no required monthly mortgage payment on their current residence and no monthly mortgage payment or a much lower payment on the investment property if they combine the two. We've helped people do that. Absolutely, which means they get to qualify for a smaller loan and have a down payment that does not impact their debt to income ratios because it's coming from the reverse mortgage. It's kind yeah. of the best of all worlds. It's a great Very strategic. Solution. Glenn's talked about that before. I think that's really smart. I help, I help some friends do that. They bought a, a summer home, if you will, uh, yeah. by using some of the cash and they still yeah. rave about it. She's in real estate and didn't think about doing that until I brought it up to her. Yeah, I love it. Okay, uh, the other one was, are you sure about this, John? Does the lender own the property when they do the reverse mortgage or how does that work? So here's what I want you to know. John is a mortgage lender. So when he closes the loan, he's going to put a mortgage lien against the property. That is exactly what's going to happen with a reverse mortgage. It's a mortgage lien, right? So we don't own the house in any way, shape or form. It's simply a mortgage lien against it. Now that does mean that the consumer must pay their property taxes and insurance going forward. And to be negative for just a second, sometimes we hear that people are losing their house because they have a reverse mortgage. Almost always in that situation, they've quit paying their property taxes. Right. It has nothing to do with a reverse mortgage. The reverse mortgage will come due and payable because they're delinquent on their taxes. It interferes with our mortgage lien. But it's not the reverse mortgage itself that's the issue. It's the failure to pay property taxes. Any mortgage requires that, guys. You got it. The tax man wants the taxes or even, paid. Even if you don't have a mortgage, you're required to pay yeah, your property taxes. You don't have a mortgage. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. 
Okay, so one more uh, qualification for a reverse mortgage. What, what does it take to qualify for this home that they're going to purchase with their reverse mortgage? Grant? Now you've those, touched on a few things, but let's just yeah. lay it all out for folks. All right, so those rules have changed over time. You know, in the good old days prior to 2014, we didn't care. We didn't care if you had any income. We didn't care about your credit because you were not going to make monthly mortgage payments. Uh, th there's a United States senator that had a concern about that and raised it loudly to HUD. And HUD <laughs> said, look, let's let's take a look at that because what we don't want to do is we don't want to close a reverse mortgage for somebody who will not have the ability to pay the taxes and the insurance and their other household expenses going forward. That's a person that's just going to fall behind on their property taxes and potentially lose the house. Let's not do that. Right. So we came up with a set of uh, financial analysis rules where we will look at their qualification. It, it differs from what you'll do on a traditional home loan. We don't use debt ratios. Instead, we look at the overall income and the expenses and, and maintenance and utilities on the house and tax and insurance. And we figure out how much money people have left at the end of the month. It's called a residual income, and it's something that's actually used for VA financing. Uh, truth be told, it looks like HUD borrowed VA's rules. Uh, and kind of copy them over and we use that method. But we have a lot of flexibility. If somebody's coming up short, if the, if we're using the rever reverse mortgage to refinance their home, we get to give them credit for the reverse mortgage proceeds we're giving them. We're going to give you X number of dollars and we have a chart on how long we think you're going to live. We divide that and we come up with a monthly income. So in some cases, that's all the income documentation we need. It's the fact that we're giving them all this money on the reverse mortgage. Very from the, Good. Yeah, from the credit standpoint, we don't have a minimum credit score, but we will look at the credit profile to make sure that somebody's not showing signs of having some financial stress. We'll also look to see if they've been delinquent on their property taxes or insurance over the last couple of years, because HUD is concerned about that, whether somebody's going to fall behind it. It jeopardizes the, the lien and therefore whether they're going to be able to stay in the house. So in some of those cases, we'll actually set money aside from the reverse mortgage and then pay the taxes and the insurance using the reverse mortgage fund. Okay. So they don't have to, to worry about that going forward either. So there's a lot of flexibility um, in the reverse world versus what you'd find with traditional financing. Good. And Kim is asking, how much down payment do we need to use if you're purchasing a home with reverse mortgage? Fine. Yeah. It, it varies based on those factors every single week. So if we're having this conversation a couple of years ago, it's a lot less than it is today. Um, so For I sure. want you to be careful. If I give you a number, sometimes people hear that number and then that's what it is going forward always. And that's just not the case. But if you're 62 today, you're going to have to probably put down close to 60%. It's a large down payment. And you might say to yourself, that's a lot of money. It is. But let's say you had a, a certain amount of money from the sale of your home. And now you don't want a monthly mortgage payment or you may not qualify. You're going to have a certain amount of money. Maybe maybe you had 400000 from the sale of your home. And that's it. But you're looking at houses that are 600000 You know, it has all the amenities that you want at six hundred, not four hundred. dollars you're going to limit yourself. You're not going to find the house that you want. Now we have the ability to combine your down payment with the reverse mortgage to get you the house that you're looking for. And because it's specific to age and those things, uh, I'd have them reach out to you, John. We can run the numbers. We can tell them very quickly, based on today's interest rates, here's what it looks like and see if it's a good fit. Yeah. Glenn and his team do nothing but reverse mortgages, guys. When I have a client that's interested in one, I always ask him, I give the age of the client, which is the birth date, actually. Birth date for the client and the purchase price of the home. And usually same day service, he will give us a presentation that shows you how much down you need to put down and all the other features, costs and all of that with the loan. And there are options here. There's fixed rate options and there's very rate options. And so we've chatted about that in previous videos. But we'll talk about that for your specific situation, certainly as well. So you can see everything there, make an informed decision. You got it. Glenn, anything else? Any other closing thoughts on our reverse mortgage chat? It's it's one where I would stay tuned. If you're thinking about a reverse mortgage, don't find out about it today and then try to use it a year from now and think those numbers are going to be the same. <laughs> yeah. Right. Let's just chat. Let's update. And if you're if you're concerned about, you know, spam and, and phone calls and all those things. If you want to make up a name when you call us, that's okay. 
just remember whatever that name is so that we can refer to it later. Um, we'll, we'll go through because we're very low key. We're not one of those 800 numbers you call and then your phone is ringing five times a day. You know, it's we're going to go at your pace and we'll walk you through it. If you want to go quickly, we're prepared to do that. If you want to uh, take your time, bring in family members, do all of that, happy to help. Yeah, this is the kind of loan product, guys, I've learned over time. We've been doing these for a few years that it takes a little while for people to get their mind around and everything. And they do bring family members in occasionally, and that's just fine. You want to make a good decision here, and sometimes you need those inputs. So we're happy with that. You got it. Glenn, thanks for joining us again. I always learn something every single time we <laughs> chat, so I guess we should talk a little more frequently so I learn more, go. right? I appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Ben. Talk to you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.